Hello and welcome to another edition of Pain Nation with Ken McKim. I'm Ken and here's everything that you should know today. So first I'm going to show you a video by a group called Vote No on to Nevada who are against a Nevada ballot question, question number two. So watch the video, it's about 30 seconds and we'll talk about it on the other side, okay? So basically, they have a problem with question two because it removes all the legal penalties for the personal use and possession of up to one ounce of marijuana or one eighth of an ounce of concentrated marijuana for anybody who's 21 or older. So where do I even start with this video? Well, first of all, this year, the governor of Colorado has already signed into law a bill banning the production of marijuana in any form that looks like gummy bears or fun animals or people or anything that could be confused to be, you know, a treat for kids, basically. And speaking of those poor kids, did any of them actually die from accidentally ingesting the marijuana? No. You want to know what the most common complaint in all those poison control calls was? It was drowsiness. <laughs> drowsiness and lethargy. Come on, you know that some of those Colorado parents were secretly maybe a little relieved that Sally and Billy were finally, you know, being quiet, kind of mellow. Just saying. So really, once again, just like with the opioid hysteria, the people behind this ad have their own agenda, and of course, they're therefore not reporting the whole story. Look what I found over at CNN. Take a look at this. About those numbers of, you know, increasing hospital admissions, quote, the numbers still are low relative to other kinds of exposure and ingestion cases in this age range. For example, for every 1,000 emergency room visits for ingestion at Children's Hospital Colorado from 2014 through 2015, only 6.4 were related to marijuana. This is from the same study that this group is basing their video on. <laughs> so there you are, right? Much ado about nothing, just another overreaction by a group trying to push their own morality on the rest of us while ignoring the facts. Fun facts, like, you know, that Colorado is going to clean up this year. Estimated $125 million collected in tax revenue for 2015, uh, which is like three times what the state collected in 2014, and that's in large part due to the legalization of marijuana. Other good things that came from this, teen pot use on the decline, prescription drug use is down, and deaths from opioids have dramatically decreased since this was enacted. So what do you want? You don't want people to take opioids for pain, but you don't want to let people have access to marijuana that can take away their pain and not kill them the way opioids do. And I realize we're talking about recreation, but Still, do you want people recreating with the opioids? I don't know. Makes no sense to me. Other things that are down in Colorado since the enactment of recreational marijuana are highway car accident deaths, and violent crime has decreased as well. So there you go, right? God forbid any of those positive trends make their way to Nevada, because we certainly don't need more money or, you know, kids not on drugs, right? Moving on in more positive news, there's going to be a rally against pain in Washington, D.C. this October. I think it's on the 22nd. I'll go ahead and post the actual dates and everything down below in the video description box. Uh, it's going to be in an area known as the Ellipse. Uh, it's right across from the White House. It's this large grassy area. They're going to try to get a lot of chronic pain patients there together and protest this anti-opioid climate that so many politicians are embracing. If you are not able to make it there in person, the organizers of this event are asking that you please email your story to them. They're going to try to 
read as many of these emails as possible to really drive home the point that this is affecting millions of people in the U.S. and and it's it's hurting people and these politicians need to realize that. Again, you can go to rallyagainstpain.com for more information. And then finally, uh, in this segment I like to call people you should check out this week, you should go check out Julie Ryan over at Counting My Spoons. And she posts a lot of very good information on here, not just for people with fibromyalgia, but with all sorts of chronic illnesses. She herself has fibro, and she's also been diagnosed with endometriosis, hypothyroidism, TMJ, migraines, and cluster headaches. So she has more than a passing acquaintance with pain. And again, she shares a lot of good information. She is also the founder of Chronic Illness Bloggers. Now, if you're like me and you blog about your life with chronic pain or you advocate on behalf of other people and you want to connect with other people who are doing the same thing, I mean, why not? This is a great place to do that. It's a very supportive environment. Uh, we talk to each other, we support each other in our blogging efforts. It's really, it's just a really cool thing. It's a cool idea. And if you do go there and you do become a member of Chronic Illness Bloggers, I would appreciate it if you mentioned that I sent you there. And I'll leave it at that for this week. Uh, again, if you don't want to miss any of my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can just go there, click that subscribe button, like the video, and then share the video with other people, because why not? You can also follow me over on the usual social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, you know, I'm all over. Or you can just go to the website, don'tpunishpain.com, that's always good. And finally, if you like what I do and you want to help me make more of these videos, I would encourage you to go to my Patreon page and just make a $10 a month donation. I really appreciate all the people who have already done so, and it really does help because there are some costs involved in doing these. So, thank you. I appreciate it. And that's it. I'll leave you for now, but as always, I'm Ken McKim, and until next time, you take care.